belonging to something and belonging to someone and, and how those are connected right. and how they're related. And, you know, seeing that, you know, we just, we can sing these songs, but for whatever reason, about a decade ago, that became my favorite Christmas mm. carol, favorite holiday song because of that line. Right. And you know, the he appeared yeah. and, my, and my soul felt its worth. Let his appearing, his coming right. was a declaration of you're important. With God, there is always more. More love, more life, more freedom. Welcome to Zoe's Exploring More with Michael Thompson. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along our journey, but He takes great care to see that we do not mistake any of them for home. Join me and the team as we explore the kingdom together, discovering the deep truths and offering encouragement for the journey. There is always more. All right, friends and allies, welcome to the Exploring More podcast, part two of Belonging with my friend Greg Sailors. And we're hanging out, um, yeah, in, in just this big conversation really about, um, about belonging. And one of my favorite Christmas hymns is O Holy Night. Mm-hmm. And I, I just want to, we're in December, holidays are coming. Sure. But I remember when this just struck me maybe a decade ago. O holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appears and the soul felt its worth. Mm. Yeah. What if our souls could feel their worth? Right. And right in that worth, there was only one conclusion. I belong, right? Yes. And uh, till the soul. Oh, holy cow! What is going yeah. on? <laughs> it's SJ. It's SJ. Yeah. It's... Uh, how did I get uh, ousted from the podcast? What well, happened? We you... voted you off the island. Yeah. I got voted off the island. In, in, a, no, that... in, a, in, a, in a podcast about belonging. Uh, right, you, right. You, I... <laughs> you weren't. You weren't welcome. <laughs> you, were, no, that... <laughs> you were kicked off the good. podcast island. No, it's good. I'm glad Greg got a chance to be on the podcast. Yeah, for it's you guys good to be see here. His face and to hear from him. Yeah. yeah, I got other stuff to do. I'll catch up with you later. All Thanks, right, SJ. All right, bro. A little cameo. Cameo. <laughs> Making sure he still belongs. Yeah, uh, which he does. Yes, so, he does. He's so, so good at it. Oh, holy night! Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, w- there's a lot of invitations and messages out there to belong. Right. But until your soul feels its worth, right? Where do you get that? Yeah, I I think of that. Where, how do you find that? I think of my early days in New Hope Baptist Church, and we always did a candlelight service, um, and we, of course, sang that song together. Yeah. And I, I remember the folks that would come to that service, and it was, I don't know, it, it, it at least in my childhood days, it felt like the people that were serious about being together. Oh, when you know, you're at candlelight? When yeah, you're, it's when Christmas you're extra, Eve. When you're at extra services, yeah. these are the serious people. <laughs> so. so, you know, there'd be 60 people there, 50 people yeah. there, all holding candles, and we'd, we'd have uh, hot cider afterwards, and it was just a special time that I felt like, as back to what we talked about in the last episode, as a child, I belonged to something. Yes, belonging to something and belonging to someone, and, and how those are connected right. and how they're related. And, you know, seeing that, you know, we just, we can sing these songs, but for whatever reason, about a decade ago, that became my favorite Christmas Mm -hmm. carol, favorite holiday song because of that line. Right. And the- he appeared and my, and my soul felt its worth that his appearing, his coming was a declaration of you're important. Yes. That's I'm what coming I, for you. I get that. I love that, Michael. I'm, I mean, it's, it is love incarnate on earth for us, yeah. for you, yeah. to be a part of the Trinity. Yeah. You belong. You belong, right? you belong to us. Yeah. yeah. You're our boys. And that, our I girls. think that's, you know, if I, if I could do just a, a time out in this space and, and, and speak directly to listeners, that's the message. That's the message of Christmas. 
Emmanuel, God with us, Mm -hmm. so we can belong. You can almost put anything first and say, so we belong. He, the cross, we go to Easter, right? He he died so you could belong. Right. He loves you and wants you to belong. Mm -hmm. You know, what what father doesn't want their child to feel that sense of belonging? value, protection, mm-hmm. worth, that it, if you're with me, I got you. Yeah. If I'm with you, I got you. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about our kids a little bit yeah. off camera and this sense of belonging and how do you bestow that? What is it that that it, it looks or feels like for them to experience belonging right? and, and to belong to something and to someone? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I love to be intentional with my kids from the naming of them to to things that we do. And I have four boys, as a lot of our listeners know. And um, yeah. so my my last little guy, um, Joshua, um, better known as the bean for many people, uh, he uh, it, it's bittersweet, Michael, but it was the last first trip for him. And what I mean by that is all my other boys have got their yeah. sixth trip, you know, and it was his turn. And so I really want to them to experience several things um, on those trips. And one of them, you know, there's three days usually. The first day is about do you love or do you see me? Do you love what you see? So I yeah, love you're you. taking the questions of the masculine journey, yeah. particularly in boyhood, right? right? Let's just hit those real quick. Sure. That, that a boy and a girl, that, that first decade, those first formative years, mm-hmm. four, five, six, seven, I mean, these, their question, the question from their heart is do you see me? Right. Do you love what you see? Do you want to be with me? Right. Now that, un- you know, fortunately, for unfortunately, we don't grow out of that. No. Because no. it's in you. But it starts, somehow it actually becomes a question. Mm-hmm. There, there, There's a cognitive transition to where a boy and a girl, that they wonder that. Right. They're, they're asking that. And hopefully I've been answering that question Up for the last six years right. and not just on this trip, obviously, but we want to reinforce that on this trip. So that's the first day. The second day really comes into this belonging idea is that you are an important part of the sailor's household, right? You are part of the family. Yeah. That's so important to me that you know that and that you are a part of God's family. You know, you are important to God and that God, our father, the King of all, King Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you know, they like you and they want you. They want you to be with them, you know. So that's the second day. And then the last day is always about, you know what, buddy, you're moving. You're not a little boy anymore. You're not a little baby anymore, rather. You now are a boy, you know, as a six-year-old, and I'm going to treat you that way. And so we were talking to mom on the way home, and he said, hey, mom, you can't call me cute anymore because I'm not a baby anymore. I said, like, well, I didn't sign up for that. You can talk to <laughs> But your, he already put that your, together? Yeah, but he already put it together. He, that you is know? amazing. <laughs> As a six-year-old. So I love well, it. Well, probably because that's what that makes him feel. Yeah, you're right. Like a baby. Yeah, it and, does. And it doesn't have anything to do with Chrissy or you. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's very I had not heard that story. Yeah, but that I just find happened. That, that but that is how that makes him feel. Right. Or or he's got some reference point, right? Of yeah, that's just fascinating. That's that's a whole other He was such a trooper. We fished, we hunted, mm. um, spent a lot of time in the cold yeah. and it was damp and rainy and he never complained. I loved all that. And he wanted to snuggle up and be close, you know, so we were able to kind of reinforce yeah. that dad's gotcha. Yeah. It's okay to be close. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're not growing out of that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when my girls were little, they wanted camo and they wanted some of the outdoor gear. I don't think they wanted to be huntresses, you right. know, or or or. I bet you thought, oh my gosh. Well, to some degree, you know, but 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 it's it's just really critical. They they what do what do I need to do to be with? Right. What you know, and versus who do I need to be? Mm-hmm. Well, you're my daughter. Yeah, you know, they're your sons. You're, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, hopefully we can answer that question without condition, but they're willing. They're very willing to, you know, pick up our, ha- our, our interests. You yes. know, if I can get dad because I can play golf, 
what, that sounds reasonable if dad plays golf. Well, the and, shirt, he, and he goes out the door with his clubs every Saturday right. or a couple times a week and you watch that. I want to play golf is translated what? I want to be with you. I want to be with you. And it wasn't lost on me that he was willing to sit in 40 degree rainy weather <laughs> for with his me trip. for no deer to come out. You know right. what I mean? Now, we did kill one. We had one come out, and he got we to see take, that. We say take on this we har- program. We harvested. Sorry. We harvested y- yeah. a, an animal, uh, <laughs> on the uh, which was wonderful, and God gave us that, you know. And right. so, anyway, it, it's not lost on me that he wanted to be with, you know. And well, we can think about stories like that with our, our wives and, and each other. Or our families. Like you said, this is th- these three things, you know, you're part of this family. Mm-hmm. And you're a part of that family, you know, this, our family, the Thompsons, the sailors, and you're part of God's family. Right. You know, so those are, those are, and, and that, it goes back to, does that expire? Do we grow out of that? Yeah, no, every no. stage of the masculine journey, every stage of the feminine journey, those questions have to be answered, even though they're asked a little differently. Yeah, they're renewed, a different invitation to it. A hundred percent. You know? You know, I think of just recently... Um, so talking about my girls, I get a text. So they're older, 30, 28, 25. So, you know, our, our presence together is, is diminished in some ways versus Josh yeah, and, and the ones that are still at home. So, and yet I, I have to maneuver in the places of communication and connection that I can, texting, you know, uh, voice to mail, mm-hmm. uh, voice to text, uh, pictures, images, you know, sure. and so there's... There is, a, there is a dialogue right. of that kind going on uh, with me and the girls. And so anyway, last week I get a, a text, hey, dad, do you want to go halves with me on NFL Sunday ticket <laughs> or the red zone? I can't remember which one. It wasn't the most expensive, one. but I'm like, you know, boy, girl, doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. When they invite you to step into spaces. Right? Do you want to go to this? Do you want to be with me? What does that presume? Do you, do you want to partner yeah. with me in right. in this? You know, it may have been just, yeah, it was a little expensive, but I'll use that road. That matter most yeah. every day, yes, all day to say yes. Mm-hmm. I want. I see you. I want to be with you. So, you know, here your daughter is, or daughters uh, uh, that were wanting to come together in this collaborative. Let's watch, and it, and it started. Even further back with Abby asking me what one of my favorite NFL teams was. Right. And it was the D- Detroit Lions. I had grown up a sorry Commanders, Redskins <laughs> fan, yes. you know, and, and all those years. And when they got good, but that's because I grew up in Oklahoma and Dallas Cowboys was everybody's team in Oklahoma. Exactly. And I was going to take the op. I just I um, get you. wired yeah. somewhat. It's like being a Duke fan. Or a Carolina fan. <laughs> so, so anyway, so, and Abby had said, you know, I watched the Hard Knocks documentary on the Lions. I, I like the Lions. So now we have that something right. in common. So we're back to belonging, has Duke fans, Carolina mm. fans, you know, fans have that. They do. And unfortunately, they have their hatred too of <laughs> their whoever their bedlam series is against. Oh my right? goodness, yes. But that's even all part of it. But I think this to belong to something, to to belong to a community mm-hmm. of other people that that have some values or or some affection for or some appreciation around you know one thing. That's that's kind of, that can be the something, and and in the church, right? It's it's supposed to be, you know, that we are like you read in Acts last last week that that we we're sharing everything. Right. We're going to take care of you, and and the, and and you belong, right? Yeah. There's something, but but that's connected to the someone because mm-hmm. there's someone that we love and are loved by in common, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So. Yeah. If there's, you can belong to a community. Let's say we have we have a few Facebook communities. Mm-hmm. You can belong to one of those communities. That's something. But how long will you stay in that Facebook community if you're not connected to someone? Right. Yeah. Not very long. No. You know, it's going to serve some kind of maybe funny thing. You know, the meme 
Instagrams we might follow or something right. like that. Um, but eventually, if you're not relationally involved with somebody, it'll be, you know, kind of meaningless. Eventually. Pseudo. Yeah. You know, and and I want people, we want people, um, and people that are watching this podcast, you know, that they feel connected to you, Michael. They feel connected to SJ. Yeah. You know, and they feel like they belong because they truly do. And you guys, as you've done this podcast so well for so long, help people to feel that, you know, that you are a friend of theirs, even though we're reaching through the screen, you know. Yeah. And we've had people come to our weekends where they've met you or they maybe have been on Recalibrate with me um, as Zoe Allies, and they're like, oh, my gosh, you know. Yeah, I've listened to, to you for you. I listen to all so, your podcasts. Right, and, for years and now. And they step into another space. And it's know, for real. Can, yeah. You know, you're real. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, gets, it gets more tangible. It really does. It, it gets more tangible, right, in that space. So, yeah, that's a great point. I love so, that. So just back to some of the, the definitions, you had you had brought with you some things that just – you felt like we're, we're important, profound along the belonging space, um, yeah. scriptures. And some, some scriptures. I, I do want to talk about as we move into some of that, I want to talk about belonging to a mission for a minute, um, because I think that's super important as well as relationally. And I was thinking about this, uh, in reference to, uh, a lot of you and I, our foundation with Ransom Heart, uh, now Wild at Heart. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're doing actually a conference, uh, when we're recording this podcast this week, uh, that's new where they've invited a lot of their allies to be there. Yeah. So we're cheering them on and hoping yeah. that's going well for them. Remember the the saying in John's book, Wild at Heart, that we have an adventure to live, a battle to fight, and a beauty to rescue. You know, And I think about um, what we do at Zoe and how people resonate with the idea from Heart of a Warrior that before you come to become the warrior, you have to be the beloved son. Or you know, with King Me and loving well and ruling well in a wounded world and and being able to translate that into small groups, right? And so people yeah. come because they love Michael if Michael's the leader or whoever you are in your area of influence leading. But they also come because of the shared mission. You know, yeah. the mission is the man, which is what we hear in some of the films that we love yeah. or just one more, you know, some of yeah. those different sayings. And so I think about that, Michael, when it comes to the chosen and why people – so resonate with that. Obviously, they love Jesus. Yeah. I think that's very true. But they have a mission, a shared mission. They belong to a mission, and it brings their life a lot of worth because of where they're going. Yeah. You know? And so I just love to hear your thoughts on, you know, belonging to the mission as well, not just a person or a group. Yeah. So I think in order, it's a great point, and in order for it to happen, you do you do have to make some room mm-hmm. in your schedule in your in your calendar in in spaces for invitation um you know the the fire circles mm-hmm. the, the 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 uh the 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 opportunity to to come once a week or you know some kind of a regular basis right i mean we we spend a lot of time and attention giving a lot of time and attention to our allies in supporting them in creating spaces for people to belong. Right. Which, which comes first through and create the space and the time. And then, and then the invitation, who will you invite? Um, I mean, I'm in four dialogues right now with men who are, who are doing that, asking me for, you know, what, what should I do? How should I construct this? What, you know, so all, all that to say, Man, you're you're more than halfway home uh-huh. if you're if you're if you're creating those spaces. Uh, Jason Hamilton, yeah. our our friends, he had In Maryland. Yeah, he had ten young guys show up. Yeah, it was beautiful. You know, right. and and he was hoping for six. Yeah, you know, and so word gets around is my point. And and some of those young hearts asked other young hearts, "Hey, come with." I love it. Rob Porter in New, yes. in New Zealand. Right, he has caught. Uh, it was, he thought, 8, 10, 12, it's 18 guys, mm-hmm. you know, that are coming over to his house into the fire pit and, and talking about important things, meaningful things, heart things. So there's a something, you know, to, to belong to this circle mm-hmm. and someone who, who is in, inviting you to that. Right. Yeah. And then the mission, un- to your point, then the yes. mission unveils. Right. The mission actually becomes you. It becomes the circle. It becomes, 
week after week as you as you add those dates and times, crap, all of a sudden you've done it for a year? I know. It's like that. You've done it for two years and and I've got a couple groups that I'm a part of like that. And people are like, you you know, when a visitor comes, this you guys have been meeting doing this for fifteen years. Right. Yeah, when went in a blink. But there's a brotherhood in there and they they feel this this is not just a Bible study. Nothing wrong with a Bible study. This is a intimate circle. This mm-hmm. is a friendship space. This is a belonging. And when you're missed, when you when you miss, you know, if you're in a Bible study, they usually don't come after you. Yeah. But if you're in one of those circles for 15 years, yeah. And you're missed, you can miss one. Right. But a dude misses two in those circles? Has anybody heard from John? Where is he at? Does what anybody happened? know what? Yeah. Did he break his leg? Because something's, you know, you know. You know especially if we hadn't heard, oh, he emailed me or he texted me, yes. said he wasn't going to be here this yeah. time. You know, that's that's how, you know, as you invest, right, as you invest in those circles, the wealth of belonging is is compounded mm-hmm. over time. Yeah. I, I think speaking of that, the we look at and think about the idea that which one comes first, you know, as we help, as you were talking about different groups that we're helping at Zoe, um, they're like, well, how do we start? Let's buy a book and let's buy books and let's do that. And all that's well and good. But we always talk about your core team and your relationships and who's your second guy, you know, who's your wingman and yeah. those types Getting of Getting some of that infrastructure in yeah, place you have so to. that this can be successful. Because, and you say it in Heart of a Warrior, is mission finds you. Yeah. And then you belong to the mission, but you belong to it together. Yeah. And then your friendships will grow the mission. Yeah. You asked me about some scripture earlier. Uh, Hit two of those real quick. Uh, And we we with our wives, I think that it's one of the the most important things that we belong. to. Yeah. I can't believe we haven't talked about marriage already. Right. She belongs to us. We belong to her. We belong to each other. You yeah. know, we are one flesh, yeah. all of those things. But Song of Songs, Song of Solomon uh, 710 says, I belong to my beloved and his desire is for me. And um, obviously that's a reflection of our relationship with God as well. And then Malachi 2.15, going Old Testament today, has not the one God made you, you belong to him in body and in spirit. You know, we are his he made us. Yeah. You know, we're his beloved. Yeah. We talk about there's in Search and Rescue takes me back to that quote. Probably my favorite quote in Search and Rescue is you can serve somebody mm-hmm. and not be in love with them. Right. But you can't be in love with somebody and not serve, and not serve them. them. That's right. So so this this intimacy, this this belonging, this connection, it, it does produce something, Greg. Mm-hmm. It produces things. It produces a sense of wholeheartedness. It produces a sense of well-being. It produces a, a sense of confidence. It, it produces, especially in the in the fray, of of some kind of assault against your worth, your belonging, your significance, you being worthy of love, right? Created for love. I mean, that's where this it, it's it's in us. The DNA of the Trinity that's in us is a dependency on the Trinity in order to secure, we call it secure attachment. Right. To have some level of security in which I know who I am. Mm -hmm. He's shown me, he's told me. And I bring that to the world rather than where I was for too many years, kind of being a peddler, trying to get from the world who I am. Right, right. Yeah, I want to add to an offer because God's given me so much. Yeah. He's brought so much healing, you know, Michael. I think people are also probably watching this that feel like they don't belong. Right. And I'm, oh, so, yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, I want them to feel as though the invitation's there, that, that they can belong yeah. to someone first, God, if you don't know Jesus. There's plenty of resources online to help you find him and on our website, but... Also, that you can belong to a group, and and you know it's my passion that folks never do life alone, that they don't live yeah. isolated, and that we can help people find you know their groups. If you go to zoe.org/allies, 
there is something we call the front lines there. And there's groups all over the United States and even into some of the countries where you can find a place to belong if you're yeah. a man. And then we have the deepening community if you're a woman that Sherry and Robin and Maggie and our, our friends there are cultivating places for women to belong as well. Yeah. Um, groups around the U.S. And we'd love for you to go there and find your group or email me at allies at zoe.org and I'll help connect you or help you start one. Right. You know, and, and so you will be together, you know, with other folks that are like hearted and like minded uh, and move in those spaces yeah. where mission finds you. Yeah, I go back. What The thought I had as you were winding that um, that sentence up is this is just so opposed. Yeah, the enemy doesn't want it to happen. I mean, this is not just you not being likable. Right. Or you not, you know, in some way, shape, or form uh, accomplishing or achieving. This is way bigger than that. Right. And way deeper than that. And so there is an enemy, an adversary that, they know if they can disrupt this sense of belonging, Mm-mm. if they can corrupt this sense of belonging, especially in the holidays when family and home and someone and something to belong, all of that is at maybe a, a, a pinnacle. It's truly assaulted. But that's why I think it can be such a hard time mm-hmm. because it can be such a glorious time. I mean, when there's that that kind of level of contrast, something's at work to invite the human heart to believe you don't belong. Yeah. There's something wrong with you. And that, and that just is, it, it kind of goes over that Niagara Falls of rejection. And man, down into that, at the end of that fall is just nothing but tumultuous, just you can't hardly catch your breath. Right. You know, so I agree with you how... How can we continue to invite? Because it because it comes with invitation, and then and then that's the risky part that somebody would email, yeah, or 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 put a put something on Facebook and say, "I'd like a group. Yeah. I, I want to be connected. I don't know how. It hasn't gone well." There's that vulnerable part mm-hmm. of stepping out again, you know, kind of getting out of that river <laughs> that leads to the falls. Of quiet desperation, our Thoreau quote, and and getting, getting to the bank, and just is is there somebody here? How courageous! How incredibly and courageous! Brave. Yeah, uh, and brave. So uh, I just I hope that our listeners, um, if we can help them to do that and have the courage, um, yeah, to maybe reach out to the guy on your left or your right in your own neighborhood. Yeah, it might be a way. Yeah, yeah. Those are desperate prayers, right? Mm. And, and it's the same prayer that we, our heart expresses as a boy or girl. Do you see me? And do you love what you do see? Do you love what you see? Do you want to be with, with me? me? Mm-hmm. And so to give the Father, Son, and Spirit another shot at answering that and bringing some remedy mm-hmm. to isolation. A cup or, of water. Or, or belong if. Yep, the cool cup of water. So mm-hmm. that's our hope, you know, yeah. and, and even talking about belonging that – I'm sure some people either have turned it off or have somewhere in this podcast just last time or, 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 or well, that's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> that um, worked for you. Or bull crap. Or, or yeah, that's you not know. true. <laughs> right, right. And so, um, so that's the brave and, and courageous space to somehow raise your hand again, somehow submit. Put yourself back out r- there. Request again yeah. and put it back out there. And so, yeah, yeah. Um, you know the the whole idea of belonging. You know, and this is end of year. I just I just want to just make a quick plug for, hey, you know, we're a nonprofit. This is a great end of years. Most nonprofits, seventy five to ninety percent of their budgets come in at the end of year, yeah. and so we just want to invite you to consider consider Zoe, consider the podcast, consider the other resources and environments that we're trying to create and relationships that we're trying to offer so that. Mm-hmm. Hearts can feel their worth, yeah. oh, holy night, and that they can have those questions answered. We're not perfect, but we sure are trying hard mm-hmm. to create those environments, relationships, resources for people to feel that. And that takes some fuel. 
Yeah. That takes some investing. So if you're looking for somewhere to invest, if, if, you're, uh, if you're wondering, you know, monthly, end of year here at the season of, of giving, uh, we would sure like to get in the lineup and, mm-hmm. and be considered sure. to, uh, to support and, uh, and fuel this mission forward for 2024. Yeah, it's it's an easy website. It's zoe.org slash belonging. And that's where you go that's to the campaign, yeah. Yeah, to know about what's going on at Zoe here at the end of the year. And um we'd love uh, for users particularly to consider a, a monthly gift. I mean, even five dollars a month, which is interesting, you know, to think about. Five dollars doesn't make a difference, but I promise you it does. Yeah. That's less than my NFL red zone deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, whatever, you should what, get whatever, $5 that's a month. Right, whatever I uh, <laughs> arranged with them. Anyway, so getting in the practice of kind of sharing some of these uh, yeah, from comments. our listeners, from our friends and allies. So I got one to close on with YouTube, a uh, YouTube user um, at E R S. I, 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 seven, seven, seven. <laughs> so fun. I got to get these. Is that an I you or no? Is that an I or no? I, I, I. So, 777, responding to the redemptive community, which okay. I think is, is kind of our North Star, if you sure. will, that we want to, yeah, the redemptive community idea is that you belong. Mm-hmm. And, and these are the tenets that we believe in, in belonging. You know, what does that look like? Your heart is good. You know, we don't major on people's behavior, but, but their, their heart. We, it takes time. Mm-hmm. It takes time. Got to put your time. It takes man. time. Yes. So here's, here's, the, uh, here's the response from the YouTube user uh, responding to Redemptive Community. Love it. Yeah. Great conversation about a sometimes difficult but potentially joyful subject. We men in particular seem to be loners, mm. but a redemptive community, right? Redemptive brotherhood, sure. redemptive marriage, mm. redemptive family, all of those work. But a redemptive community is so necessary for our true selves. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Me too. Because that's the benefit of risking and entering into some of those circles. You might really discover who you are mm-hmm. in the process of discovering who others are and yeah. helping them see things that they can't, that are an invitation for you to not only get in a circle to receive, but redemptive community says you get in a circle also by what you can give and you and you alone, what's unique to you. So I love that I comment. Do too. Yeah. And it goes with our title, exploring more so you can become more. Yeah. You can become. There's always more, right? Yeah. Who right. you are. So friends and allies, thank you. And um, I think there, this is, yeah, this is uh, one of our closest to Christmas. So we can say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from uh, the Exploring More podcast. SGL will be back with us soon. And uh, thanks to Caleb and Serena and our team that uh, makes the Exploring More podcast roll. If this has been encouraging to you, you know the spiel. And go to one of those platforms, comment, like, like Mm-hmm. Pass it along forward and uh, and maybe have a conversation with uh, with with whoever you forward it to. What did you think of this uh, this podcast? I'd like to talk about belonging mm-hmm. and uh, because I think it's the conversations that we get into with other image bearers that have a way of answering some of those core heart questions. So uh, Merry Christmas and we'll see you next time on the Exploring More podcast. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Exploring More. The landing page for this podcast is zoe.org forward slash podcast. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash podcast, where you can find the show notes and various platforms to which we broadcast. You can also find us and the life of more by visiting Zoe on YouVersion Bible app, Right Now Media, our Facebook page, and Zoe on Instagram and Twitter. Remember, with God there is always more, and you were made for more.